Wayne Fromm, who has converted his musings, his meanderings, into nearly 50, I said 50, successful commercial products, even among inventors. Wayne Fromm, you are a rare bird. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Charles. Let's uh, just talk about a couple of these inventions, because while you may not be a household name, surely to God there are people out there who would recognize what it is that you've created. It's uh, quite the list. Give us your faves. Well, my favorite uh, was the Beauty and the Beast Magic Talk and View Mirror. Uh, that was a very fun project to work on. Uh, I, I had kids uh, writing me letters telling me that they slept with it under their pillow. It was, uh, was a favorite amongst uh, well, kids worldwide. Now, uh, I just wonder if you could uh, give us a couple of others because no doubt that there are people who are thinking about holiday shopping right now. They're going to be listening to this with, with that in mind. What else could they look for? Well, the one that we have for this Christmas is uh, it's called the Quick Pod, and it's the world's first extendable handheld tripod where people are able to actually get in their own photos and their own videos without having to ask a stranger for assistance. Now, I want to ask you this uh, question before we go on to talk about uh, some of the other items. Does an inventor have a different mind, or does an inventor just have a different kind of disciplined mind? You know, I've done some research on this. There's, there's uh, ver relatively few studies on creativity, and I think that there's a difference in the way uh, inventors think. Uh, the, the, the term that came to mind was psychologically androgynous. It seems that uh, inventors are able to understand all people fairly well, and uh, that, that seems to play a role in how we think, I, I believe. So in understanding people well, you understand their needs, and that can make you a tremendous servant of people's needs. Correct. Their needs and their wants. There's a difference, of course, between the two. And it's, it's a fine line, and at the same time, as an inventor, uh, I've met many, and, and I haven't met a, met a whole lot who are able to, uh, in a nice way, exploit their own invention in business. There, there's a different mindset that most inventors have as far as uh, being entrepreneurial or being creative. It's, it's even a rarer mix to find you know, people that can, can pull off you know, manufacturing, distribution, you know, and, and manifesting that invention. By the way, uh, folks, uh, when you get home, because uh, many of you are listening to this in the car, when you get home, you want to log on to this fabulous website that Wayne has, uh, which will tell you much more about his inventions and what you can purchase uh, during the holidays right now. It's very easy. From is spelled F-R-O-M-M, -M, and the website is FromWorks.com. It's just that experience. The From experience is at FromWorks.com. Take me back to childhood. How young were you when you were first inventing things, Wayne? I was uh, probably about uh, four or five years old. I remember some early inventions. Uh, I had a television set, and it did not have a remote control in those days, so I rigged up some reels from an 8 millimeter film, the little plastic reels. I cut them, and I stuck them onto the, the uh, volume control knob with some putty, and I had some strings, and I was able to control the on-off and the volume, and I, I was pretty young when I did that one. How young were you? <laughs> you were tinkering with the TV? Yeah, well, I was tinkering with the outside of it, not the inside, but I was probably about five or six. Five or six years old. And it did, uh, often inventors are able uh, to sort of follow their creative path because they don't have anyone in the house saying, don't do this and don't do that. They've got a fair amount of freedom. Were you on a tight leash or a very long one as far as the, the parents were concerned? My parents were very open-minded, very entrepreneurial, very creative. Uh, even to this day, my mother's friends call her the mother of invention. She gets a kick out of that. Uh, my father uh, was very creative. He was uh, a business person, uh, and he passed away many years ago. But we had a very, very uh, open uh, you know, family house where we can discuss ideas and brainstorm, and, not, and no one made fun of any idea. There was no idea was stupid. Do you have the feeling that the number one reason why many creative young people uh, aren't fulfilling their human potential has nothing to do with the school system, public or private, nothing to do with the government, left wing or right wing. It has a lot to do with whether or not the parents encourage them the way your parents encouraged you. You know, I would tend to agree with that statement because I'm not really involved in politics in any way. I, I kind of, uh, you know, live in my own world, and, and my family experience certainly, uh, you know, lent itself to uh, allowing me to be creative and to make mistakes and to, you know, dust myself off and go back at it. Would you consider yourself a lot smarter than the average person? I mean, are you an Einstein? Um, I, I wouldn't uh, go so far to make that kind of judgment. I, I would say that 
in certain areas I'm able to outthink many people, but I don't mean to say that I'm smarter than them. Now, I wonder if uh, you were to pick just one out of your 50 products right now uh, that would titillate a 12-year-old more than anything else in the world, and you could give him that particular product from the Wayne Fromm experience, what would it be? You're talking about ones that I've already invented? One that you've already invented, yes. Well, I have one that's coming out in 2008 that I think is that product. It's, it's uh, called Kamakai. It's a word I invented. They're micro comic books that the kids need little magnifying glasses to, to read the comics. They come in miniature DVD cases, and the kids flip them and trade them. Uh, but that's, that's about a year away. But anybody that would, you know, if they can get their hands on it today, I think it would be a great collectible. Will we be able to get a comic tie for under under what it would cost to buy a plasma TV, for instance? Uh, I think so. You'll be able to buy a comic tie for three dollars and ninety nine cents. You get five of them in a pack, and you'll be able to trade them and collect them. So they're very, very affordable. But they're not out for another year and a half. Affordable, accessible for the creative minds like Wayne Fromm and others. Wayne, thank you so much for this. My pleasure. If you want to log on and find out much more about this inventor, 50 commercial products, and he's probably got 50 more in him, and that's uh, easy to log on to from, it's spelled F-R-O-M-M, fromworks.com. We spoke to Wayne Fromm, Canadian inventor in Toronto. This is Adler Online with Charles Adler. The cutting edge of all that creates. On the Chorus Radio Network.